Hey everyone, it's Angus here. I just wanted to make a video um, overview of Comsec. You know, Comsec is one of the more popular trading platforms here in Australia, and I just wanted to um, show you a bit of a, a tip that you know some people might not be so familiar with around how you can find your own stocks that you might you know be willing to trade or you know go back and talk to your broker about trading. So this is um, you know more about the functionality as opposed to you know trying to find you know what what's the right stock for you. Everyone's got their different criteria. Some people are more technically oriented. Some people are more fundamentally oriented, you know, so it just depends on how you like to trade. But I so said, I just wanted to show you a little bit of an overview about how you might be able to um, narrow down on stocks that suit your particular um, investing criteria and, you know, what you might like to, again, have discussions with, um, you know, either your broker or, you know, put your own trades onto the market. But it's just a kind of a cool tool that, you know, might might not be um, you know aware to so many people. So, without further ado, you, you know, you got your Comsec homepage. Once you've logged in, we're going to go to quotes and research, and there's a whole heap of you know quite good information all the way through um, this section of the site. So you can see you've got market sectors, quotes, trading ideas, find and filter stocks, and this is where we're going to you know head towards um, recommendations and tools. And so I'd, I'd say to you, you know, go through and click on everything, you know, under this section. You can't do any harm. You're not going to wreck your portfolio. You're not going to do any damage. You can't break anything. So literally go through and have a look at all of these things and see what all the information is under each one. So, um, you know, looking at this page here, um, if you click on the pre-market tab, it's a really good way to start the morning. And if you want to get a, a, a review of what's happening, you know, overnight on some of the overseas markets, you know, how they've performed, um, if you want to see how some of the commodities have performed and, you know, if you scroll down a little bit, you know, these morning reports are, you know, quite good. You know, these video reports, um, they're all, you know, made each day and, you know, they have um, some quite good information in them that's, you know, worth having a bit of a look at, you know, you know, and it's, uh, it's just, you know, the more information you have available to you, the better decisions you can make. You go back to the 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. tab. So this is saying what's happening on the ASX right now. You know, the, the market runs from 10 to 4. Um, if you want to have a look through something like a heat map and say, you know, I've got a little bit of money to spend, you know, where should I spend it at the moment? You can look through here and you can say, well, these are the different sectors. And you can have a look over here and you can say, well, over one year, um, you know, real estate's gone up 23.6%. But utilities, for example, is down 16%. So if I have a look through, I can see 34 35, 44. So financials has, you know, done very well at 44%. 12, 10, 33, 16, 13, 12. And so if you think, well, geez, you know, financials has done well over the last year, but over the last month, it's down 0.95. Whereas this one up here, industrials is up 3.3. So maybe the market's swinging back towards, you know, industrials. Um, today, you can, you know, not, not Kind of ignore to some extent you know it's too short a time period to you know see what the overall big trends are you can see that materials for example today is you know doing quite well you know materials is up 1.4 and the market's only up 0.2 and if you want to find out more information about that then what you can do is literally click on materials for example and see here it's moved to this next tab called sectors and it's opened up the materials sector and you can see here you know these are the ones that are doing particularly well today so you know, same deal, LYC is up 4.12%. You can see that here. Um, NST is down 0.5 or 0.05%. BHP, you know, 0.73%. And these are the large caps. So if you were a bit more, you know, uh, open to risk, you might say, well, let's show me the mid caps. You know, what do the mid caps look like? And so you can see that, you know, Lion Town is, you know, up 10%. You know, that's doing really well. Um, Vulcan's one of my favorites. You know, they're up 10% today. So, you know, that's the day's change. You know, their chart's just going straight up. So, you know, well well done to them. Um, you know, nickel mines, you know, 5.53%. And so let's have a look at small caps. So we'll drill down a bit further. And so because these are much smaller and, you know, some of these bigger ones dominate, you know, some of these little squares all but disappear. But, you know, uh, Sayona, I don't know who they are, but, you know, they're up 6.9. Uh, this one here is 6.7. This one here is 5.43. So... All this does is just allows you to very quickly perhaps identify stocks that you might not heard about, might not have heard about before, and then go and you know find out a little bit more information about them. So, um, if we go back to the mid cap ones, we're still materials, and I said I, I like Vulcan. It's just a stock that I've liked for quite a while, 
Um, you can see here a little bit of information. Over the last three years, earning growth has averaged 18.7, just in this, you know, this just general uh, sector. Um, if I, you know, I can see the latest news headlines, I can see recent research, I can see market sensitive announcements. Um, this is also an area that I'd, I'd like to show you too. Like this is pretty cool. But if I go back to Vulcan, I can now click on buy. I can click on sell. I can add it to a watch list. I can set an alert. I can, you know, do a whole bunch of stuff. But what I want to do is I just want to find out a bit more about it. So I'm going to go detailed quote. That then opens up. You, know, you can see I'm still in the quotes and research. I'm on quotes now. And so here it tells me a whole bunch of really useful information. You know, these, this is the page that I spend most of my time on. But it basically says, you know, the, the last price was $16.22. It's up $1.60 today or 10.94%. You know, it started the day at roughly $15.10. It's been up to $16.45. And so you can see, you know, its current price is $16.22. So it's made, you know, it's dropped down a little bit from its, you know, high of today. But the low of today was $15.06. And so, you know, whoever managed to pick the low that, you know, pulled back a little bit, you know, that's great. Um, and so, again, you can sort of see the volume of, the, you know, it's going through the number of trades. You know, it's just interesting information. Or I, th I think it's interesting. Um, I like that you can see the, the queue. Um, you know, this is really difficult to see on, you know, some other sites and in the US. But I like to know that, you know, if, I'm, if the current price is $16.22, that, that's the last price that it's sold at then I can see that there's buyers at $16.19 and there's sellers at $16.22. There's sellers at $16.23, $16.24, $16.25, you know, quite a lot more volume at $16.26. Um, and the number means how many sellers there are. So there's three people who are selling uh, $1,245 total worth of shares. And over here, there's, um, you know, one person willing to buy 22, two people willing to buy 159, or you know, total of 159 at $16.18. So what I like to do is I sort of scroll down and, you know, there's ways that you can manipulate this, but um, it's just a, a general guideline. You know, what I was taught in school is that if there's more buyers than sellers, then it's a good indication that, you know, there's more demand for this particular stock. So that's not always true in every circumstance, but it's just something that I like to look at. And, you know, I like to feel that, you know, if there's a whole heap of people wanting to buy this stock and they're just trying to determine what the best value that they can get in at, um, you know, is, is more reassuring than if I looked at this and, you know, there was no buyers and everyone was trying to sell, then it's a stock that I'd probably, you know, be a bit more alarmed about and want to do a bit more research on. Um, this little summary here is quite good. Like this is more of a technical analysis summary and all it's doing is saying that, you know, the stock's in a bullish trend confirmed by multiple indicators, specifically a five-day moving average of the stock price. It's above its 50-day moving average. Additionally, both the 220-day moving average are trending higher. So that's just a technical summary of what's happening in the chart. You know, it doesn't sort of take into account any fundamentals, um, but it just gives you a little idea of, you know, what what the technical indications on this particular price action is. And if you scroll down a little bit further, some of these services you can subscribe to, and they'll let you know if they think that you know is the stock a strong buy, is it undervalued, is it overvalued, is it you know, you know, is it a sell. It just depends on what the um, the current brokers are on the stock that you're looking at. You can see all the fundamentals like market cap, PE ratios. You know that's you know PE ratio is always good for your fundamental investors, um, and it tells you here a little bit of what it does. You know, I always like to know does the stock make sense. You know, I can see the price is going really well, but does it make sense? And so if I read this, it basically says that it's an Australian company that's developed the world's first and only zero carbon lithium process and plans to produce battery-grade lithium hydroxide from, you know, geothermal bronze, pump from wells and renewable, you know, geothermal energy byproduct. And so I look at that and I think, you know, all the electric car manufacturers around the world, you know, they're all desperate for lithium. You know, lithium is obviously going for all these batteries. Um, they love the idea of it. They're all trying to be environmentally friendly. Lithium mining is typically a dirty industry. You know, any sort of mining is typically, you know, not, not an environmentally friendly activity. And so if they can do a carbon, you know, zero carbon you know, lithium process, then I can imagine that, you know, your companies like a Tesla or like a BYD or like a NEO or, you know, even the Fords of the world, you know, they're going to want to try and put environmentally friendly materials into their cars. So to me, it kind of makes sense that it's going up, you know, demand for the electric vehicles is through the roof. So to me, I kind of look at that little summary and I think, well, that makes sense. You know, so that's an interesting stock that I'd then, you know, perhaps look at. Um, I can then go through and make more of a review. I can see here's all their latest announcements. Um, I particularly look at the market, it's market sensitive ones, um, because I want to see that the, um, 
Now, those are the sort of big bits of news that they're announcing to the market versus these more administrative type ones. Um, you know, the annual report's good. You know, the, the short version is these yellow ones mean they think it's going to probably have an impact on the price. You know, sometimes it's good news, sometimes it's bad news. You know, when you see that they've partnered with someone, you think that's probably good news. Um, you know, they're going to apply to list on another stock exchange to give them more exposure, so that's probably good news. Um, partners with Vulcan, the zero carbon lithium project, you know, with a partner like Renault, that's, you know, got to be great news. So there's a few things in here where I sort of look at and I think, well, that kind of makes sense. Um, charting is something that I like. I like to look at charts. You know, I like to say, well, it's, you know, going up nice and steadily from left to right. You know, it, it seems like it's, um, you know, it seems like it's doing well. You know, had a bit of a pullback through here, um, back to a value area. And depending on how adept you are with charting, you know, this is quite good. You can add a whole bunch of indicators. So um, one that I like is an RSI. So I'm going to click on indicator. And I'm going to go up a bit and I'm going to type in RSI. And click on this. RSI is one of the more commonly used indicators. Um, let me just go back to make sure that I've got all my information on the chart. And you can see down here, see how it's saying when it gets into this red area, it's considering it's considered overbought, and when it gets into this green area, it's considered oversold. And so, as it gets into this red area, it's likely to go down. You can see here the price has gone down. Red area, price has gone down a little bit. Um, and when it gets down to this sort of green area where they think you know too many people have sold it, you can see it starts to go up again. You know, green area, you know, a bit a little bit close to the green area, started to go up a bit, got to this oversold point, it's come back down. And so the RSI is just a good little way of, you know, being able to look at a stock and see whether you're buying at perhaps a good value area or not. And at the end of the day, it just depends on how long you're going to buy and hold it for. Like if you want to buy this for the next 20 years, then this isn't very important. But if you're going to say buy it and, you know, maybe hold on to three months or six months, then you want to buy it good value. And so you can see, you know, it's all the way up here in the red and you can see the price has come back down. And so... I like to buy stocks personally when they're somewhere between about 50 and 65 because I just think that that's the spot where, you know, they're not sort of going to go down. I like to buy them when the little, you know, end of this tail is pointing up. And so I would probably wait until this one got back to around maybe 60 and then I'd look for an entry. You know, I'd look to buy it when it got to about 60. But that's just how I trade. You know, it's not, not a recommendation. It's not a suggestion. I'm just saying there's all these tools here um, that are you know available to you that you can add. Um, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. You can add a whole bunch of indicators um, that just might give you a little bit of information about whether this is you know at a at a price that you know you want to you know invest your money into. Um, you know again, whole different ways to look at it. You know candlesticks are you know a good way to look at charts because you get to see the high and the low of the day and uh, all those sorts of things. So again, it's just sort of saying that there's all this information. Again, you can't do any harm. You can't do any damage. It's just a little way for you to be able to research stocks. You can save these indicators. You can draw trend lines if you want to draw trend lines. Um, you know, it, you know, it's 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 good. It's a it's a very good little tool. You know, to um, you know, do stuff. You know, it's uh, it's 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 good. You can also then look at things like dividends. Um, you know, if this company pays dividends, this one doesn't. Recommendations. So this will give you an idea if it's you know being covered by any analyst. It's not. You know, these more sort of smaller speculative shares typically aren't. Um, you can find out more about the company, you know, where is it based, you know, who's the, you know, stakeholders, major players, forecasts and trends, you know, earnings surprises, that sort of stuff, earnings, dividends, forecasts, forecast earnings. You can look at things like trade history, you know, that's useful if you want to download and put into a spreadsheet. You can download a CSV. You've got all the financials you can go through, you know, return on equity, um, historical statistics, you know, how it's gone, you know, year on year. Um, derivatives, if it had derivatives, you know, and underneath each of these options, of course, there's, you know, lots of other and other bits and pieces. But so that's just once you find a share you want to zoom in a bit more on, it's just a, an easy way to, you know, do a little bit more analysis. So we'll go back up to trading ideas. Um, and this one is just stocks that, um, you know, um, Comsec has put into a collection, you know, they've basically grouped these stocks together. And so it might be an easy way for you to, you know, have a bit of a look. So there's stocks that are income generating. So there's 21 stocks that they've grouped into this income generating group. Um, if you want more property exposure, there's 20 stocks that they've put into this group. Um, you know, you don't have to buy a house to invest in the property market. 
um, income generating. So, you know, these are, you know, stocks that pay regular dividends. So you can go through and have a bit of a look through these and just, you know, it's all about discovering companies that you might not have heard of or might not have thought of before. And so, you know, just a nice little way of doing things. Um, find and filter stocks. This is really the area that I wanted to, you know, give you access to. So um, you've got these predefined screens built into the system. So, you know, it says, what's your trading goal? Um, I want to have a look at growth stocks. Um, I want to look at p potentially stocks that are undervalued. Um, and I want to sort them by, or, you know, show them by just general, you know, let's look at the general overview. And so then, you know, it says, you know, from this particular group, it's a little bit like that um, grouping that we saw before in the trading ideas. And so it's just sort of saying, you know, here's a whole bunch of stocks that you can look at, um, you know, WAX, WAM, WA, you know, you can sort them, move them around, um, look at them by different criteria, you know, you look at them by performance, market performance, super performance, you know, all these different things. Um, and, you know, if you want to find a bit more, again, same deal, you, you know, highlight it, you go to detailed quote and it'll bring up that previous page. And so it's just a, a just an easy sort of predefined way to um, see what, you know, trading view is, you know, kind of giving you, you know, the ability to look at that's already sort of pre-sorted, I guess. But the thing that I like the most is this custom screen. And this is really what I wanted to show you. So thank you for, you know, persevering so far. If I click on this little custom screener tab, um, what it will do is what I want to do is I want to go back to um, reset. And so if I click reset, that should take out all the results. Click on general. All right, this is a bit of a mystery because I should see 2000 results. So it's just catching up. So, so there's roughly 2000 stocks or you know, assets that you can trade um, in the ASX. So there's 2,189 results. And so to try and work out, how do I sort through those 2,189 results to find those stocks that I'm interested in? Um, I can do some of the things like I can say, well, let's sort by performance um, and see what that has. Once it catches up. Right, so you can see here, this is now 2,189 stocks. And I've now got it viewed by performance. And I can say, show me the performance over one year. And if I click on this, in theory, it's meant to sort them all by that one year, but it's grayed out. Oh no, there you go, so it did work. So I'll click it again. It's a little bit slow because I'm recording this video. Right, there we go. So I've now sorted the, all the stocks on the ASS, on the ASX, by their performance. You can see this one here, you know, Future Metals. Um, over the course of a year, it's up a thousand percent. You know, this one here is up, you know, 1500%, uh, sorry, year, year, it's up 1800% over a year, 700% over this year, 1500% over this year. And it's partly why I like Vulcan. That's the one we were looking at before. Um, you know, 1200%, you know, 1100%. So again, it's just this super simple way to look through this and say, you know, are there stocks in here that I think are interesting that I might not have seen before? And that's a lot of stocks to look through. So that's um, 2,189 stocks. And so what I can do is I can go add more criteria. So I can click on this little uh, button here and it opens up this pop-up and I can say, well, that's great. So things that are important to me is I, I'd like to see market cap. So I'm not going to want to, I, I want to, you know, I only sort of look at stocks where let's say they're a larger market cap. Um, price is important to me. Um, what else is important? Um, I can select from any of these criteria through here. You know, performance, percent change, um, relative to the 52-week high. So I could tick this one here. So I think this one could be interesting. And then I've got all these other ones here, performance versus the ASX. So how's it going compared to the ASX? Performance versus sector, how's it going to its sector? Um, if I was a technical trader, I can actually filter by, you know, how's it going? You know, is there is, you know, is a Bollinger Band breakout or, you know, how's it going versus the RSI? So let's put in this RSI because we did talk about that before. And so now I'm going to go close. And you can see I've still got 2140 results. And so I'm going to say, let's have a look at the mid cap. Remember how when we looked at um, the, um, the uh, heat maps, it sort of showed the mid cap ones were doing very well. They were outperforming the, um, the larger caps. So let's go mid cap. And so once I've clicked mid cap, I'm hoping that it automatically refreshes. 
I don't think I have to press anything. Um, do I have to press go anywhere? Can't see that. Oh, no. Okay, so see how it's caught up now. So it's a bit slow. So once I hit that mid cap, there's now 53 results, which is really interesting. Now, I don't want to buy any stocks where the price is, let's say, less than $5. So I'm going to put in $5. I'll just click somewhere else. So I'm hoping it's going to get rid of all these. See these little ones like IMU's at the top? And see how now IMU's gone. And so it's now ASM. So it's now got rid of all the stocks below $5. And I might say, well, I only want to see stocks up to $100. You know, I'm going to be a little bit more speculative. So let's only show me stocks between $5 and $100 in price. So we'll just wait for it to catch up. There's 27 results. There might not be any that are over $100. No, there's nothing over $100 here anyway. Um, and so the next thing I'm going to do is say, over the 14-day relative strength index, um, if I click on that, and it's saying these are the ones that are in that overbought category. And let's see if there's any in the oversold category. So there's none that are oversold, which kind of makes sense because they're all going up quite well. So because this is filtered out too many, I'm going to get rid of it. So I'm going to click X and get rid of it. And then I should have a whole bunch of stocks that come back. In theory, when it catches up. Waiting, waiting. A bit slow. It's normally, it's normally much quicker than this. Yep, there we go. So there's now 84 stocks that meet that mid-cap criteria between $5 and $100. And so the other thing I want to do is I want to say, um, I won't worry about this for now. Let me get rid of that for now. But so there's all these stocks here. And so what else is important to me? So I might say, uh, add more criteria because I want to fill them down a bit more. Um, show me, I want to see ones where they've, where they've, you know, they're making money, let's say. So uh, franking payouts, revenue growth, EPS growth, return equity, valuation, performance. Um, Current PE is less than the average PE, so it's sort of more value. Price earnings to growth, price earnings, price sales. Profit margin, operating margin, any surprise. Let's add revenue growth in and see what the revenue growth is. Um, you know, business is always going to do better if their revenue is doing better. So let's say, put my revenue growth up to, making this up, let's say 100. Let's see what speculative ones it gets rid of. So... You know, you can see now we've got, you know, URW, which um, Uni Bale, they're up 1.29%. Over the year, they're up 73%. So again, just depending on what criteria is important to you, it's just a way that you can go through and, you know, filter more bits and pieces out um, until you get to your, you know, list of stocks that you want to go through and, you know, do a deeper dive investigation on. The next tab along is recommendations. So again, this is all the sort of broker recommendations. So again, you can go through and you can say, you know, only show me recommendations where it's a buy recommendation. Um, this now gives you a list of all these buy recommendations. You can see Morningstar recommendations, consensus recommendations, um, you know, 544, um, a strong buy. And so you can see through here, um, you know, these various stocks are all, you know, sort of, you know, recommend, I guess, is a strong recommendation to buy. Now, some of this is, you know, subscription only. And you can see this one here is a strong buy. So let's have a quick look at Bex. So I'm going to click on Bex. I don't know anything about the stock. Bike exchange, whatever that is. So, you know, it doesn't look like a very good chart, you know, over this period of time. But maybe they're looking and saying what's been oversold, so it might be good to buy. If I scroll down, it says online marketplace that operates globally in eight countries across four areas. Technology platform to connect consumers with retailers of bicycle products and accessories through a convenient, transparent, efficient platform. So, you know, these guys are saying it's undervalued. You know, the global consensus is it's a strong buy. Um, so, you know, if you're a if you're a value trader, you know, if you really like your stocks that you think are in the oversold space and want to get hold of those, um, you know, that could be a, a way to look at them. I, I, you know, not my sort of style of trading. You can see it's eight percent down today, so maybe it's oversold on news. Um, let's have a look at the last time they had news. So 27th of the 8th, so it's nothing current. 
you know, annual report I could look at and have a look and see, you know, what's happened to that stock. But, you know, I, I tend to, you know, like my, you know, more positive stocks. A um, bunch of stuff under tools. Um, again, you know, without making this video too much longer, you know, there's just a whole bunch of information you can go through on here, you know, looking at charts, um, you know, looking at more information on them. So this one's particularly for near map. Let's have a look at the bowl again, because, you know, the bowl's the one that we've been looking at a couple of times. Not a recommendation to buy. It's just purely, you know, a, a stock that, um, you know, we've identified looked like it was quite good. So click on bowl. Uh, now we've got to go add. Yep, Vulcan Energy Resources. So I can do buy, sell. I can see today's change. Um, I can have a look at, you know, let's say the chart over the last three months. It tells me the sort of technical analysis here. You know, it says it appears in a strong bullish trend. You know, put some indicators on your chart for you. Um, you can say, you know, the trend, look at momentum. It tells you, you know, strong bullish momentum. I can look at volume. You know, more people coming in. You know, today's volume is in line with the normal for this point of day. Two million shares have been traded so far. Um, and so, again, you can just sort of get a bit of an idea over three months, which is what we've got ticked up here. You know, it sort of tells you, you know, a bit more information about the, um, the stock. We can say turn into a candlestick chart. Um, and this is all automatically generated analysis based on what's happening with the price action. So, um, you know, I can say show me, um, I don't know, weighted moving average. So you can see that's now appeared on the chart. You know, volume is down there. I can say, um, show me um, OBV, you know, whether buyers or sellers are in charge. So it's sort of saying that buyers are in charge at this stage. Um, show me the relative strength index. Is it, you know, oversold or not? Um, you can see here, you know, it's not in that overbought or oversold area. It's sort of, you know, right through the middle. So there might be a little bit of upside still, but it's certainly getting to the, you know, slightly less valuable area. Anyway, that's, um, that's probably a longer video than what I meant to make, but it's just, trying to give you this idea that there's a, a lot more um, in these tools that some people just, you know, haven't ever gone to click. And it can help you find stocks like Vulcan where, you know, you might look at this and think, you know, that's an interesting stock. It makes sense. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to, you know, add that to my portfolio or talk to my broker or, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you'd like to do. The other one that I want to try and find that I always think is interesting is I want to find the daily news announcements. So I always have a bit of a difficulty finding it. It's also help you trade, manage my account. Uh, site news, view all site news. So I never know where to find it. So I tend to bookmark it once I do. Latest news headlines, company announcements. Here we go. So I click on this. Company announcements. There you go. It's under that anyway under tools. So you've got quotes and research, tools, and you've got company announcements. Um, and there's obviously a whole bunch of other things through there, but let's just wait for it to load. I'm surprised how slow it is. Might be my fault. All right, waiting, waiting. I'm always tempted to click away and click on it again to see if it's... Um, Sort of frozen up dividends, company announcements. Might be down, but the advantage of going to company announcements is you get to see all the um, breaking news for the day. And if you filter it by the um, the ones that are sensitive, you know, the sensitive news are the ones that are more likely to affect the price. You get to see very early on, you know, across the whole of the ASX, who's doing what that's interesting. Um, you, you know, you get a really good understanding of, you know, who's just, you know, formed a new partnership, um, you know, and all the sort of, you know, these company announcements, you know, a company's meant to make these announcements, you know, to the ASX before they make it to the public. And so it's, you know, a race between you and the media um, to, you know, see who can read the news the first and, you know, perhaps act on that news. But as I said, disappointing it's not loading. I don't know why. Um Could be could be my pop up blockers issue. Could be the fact that I'm making a video. Here we go. We've loaded it. So company announcements is now loaded. So sorry about that. So 
What I like to do is I like to tick this market sensitive because I don't want all these, let's call them administrative type articles. So I'm going to click market sensitive and that's going to show me just the ones that are, let's call them newsworthy. But there's all these different categories here. So you can go through all of these. You can basically say, only show me announcements for companies in the, whatever financials was the one that was doing well. So only show me information from the companies in the financial sector. So you can see GDC has had a trading halt. East Coast expansion is significant appointment. So that sounds like positive news. Monthly funds under management. Latitude opens 150 million cable notes. So let's have a look at this one. So e &A. So nothing's really happened today. It's probably in a, I don't know, probably in a trading halt or something. Um, but it could be interesting to bookmark that one for later just to see what the news was. Let's untick financials to see them all. Let's have a bit of a skim read. So this is today's news. You can see, you know, there's 107, lots of news yesterday, 104, the day before, 102, the day before, 109, the day before. You can scroll back and forth. You can look around. Um, so acquisition of Mindport software presentation, August revenue steady. Uh, let's see if there's anything interesting. Santos and Oil Search combined to create a regional champion. So that could be interesting. Um, region champion, encouraging results from... You know, these gold miners always have encouraging results. Acquisition of mine portal, so that could be interesting. Um, Amani raises seven million to fund development. Uh, let's see if there's anything that's interesting. I mean, they're all interesting, but you know, you look for one of those big headlines. See, lithium targets identified at uh, Ravens for you know lithium projects. So, you know, that could be good. Could be good news. You know, we know that lithium, or we think lithium is quite good. So let's have a. We can click on it, and it'll open up a. PDF document that shows you the news. You can then read through and you know peruse and see what the, um, the article is about. But the more important thing is what happened to the price. So uh, where were we? Lithium identified, targets identified, so BNR. So you can see, wow, 47% today. So that announcement, you know, sent their you know share price rocketing. Um, if you'd managed to read that announcement just as it came out, so that came out at 9.24 this morning, so just before the market opened, you know, that's the sort of stuff that if you're a more speculative trader, you know, you might want to dive on that sort of news and, you know, take some action you know, towards it. Um, further nickel sulfides at Carboid. So let's see what happened to the price of this one. So down 2.4%. So, you know, that news didn't excite the market. It went the other way. Um, yeah, got some grants to drive the next phase of growth. So up 4.7%. And that's sort of fairly good news. You know, again, you know, there's a bucket load of stuff. You can literally start at the top and just say, um, you know, highlight it. Didn't have any impact price, no impact on price. Up 1.79 on news. Nothing interesting. 0.2. So up 1% on it. Santos news. AIV. So it's just an easy way to flick through and see if there's anything happening that's, you know, sort of driving a bit of an increase in that particular stock for the day. Bass, so Bass is up, you know, 33%, you know, but again, it's 0 0.001, so that doesn't count. That's one of those penny stocks. Uh, ANL, SBQ, CTM. So CTM's up, you know, 11.28%. So what's their news? You know, new Greenfields nickel sulfide discovery. So, you know, that's going to be good news, of course. So if we open that up. Got no idea if things are opening as part of the video or not. Uh, Sulfide discovery at Jaguar, so you know, good news. You know, maiden exploration intersects significant zones of nickel sulfide, of nickel sulfide mineralization. Um, you know, it just reads like it's good news, and 100% owned. You know, project Brazil. You, know, you always get minerals out of Brazil. That's you know, sort of Australia's best competitor, I guess. I'll tell you a little bit about the project. Always sends you, you know, a few pictures. Tells you more technical information about the project. So it's interesting, you know, you get to go through and, you know, kind of share that these, you know, share the excitement of these discoveries and, you know, then make your own call about whether it's something you think is risky or um, something you'd like to invest in, um, you know, and what your decision making around that particular thing might be based on the, the newsworthiness that you know, has come out. So, you know, there's a stack of stuff through there, so I won't, won't go through all that. But anyway, again, much longer video, my apologies for the length, but you know, you can skip around, skip through it. But again, I just wanted to sort of show you that there's different ways that 
You can use tools like a Comsec. You know, I'm sure that ANZ has a very similar setup. I'm sure that Westpac has a very similar setup. Um, you know, a lot of your um, trading platforms around the world will all have something where you can go in and you can start with, you know, your 2,000 results. In the US, it's, you know, 10,000 results. And you can start applying your own criteria until you get down to, you know, the type of stocks that, you know, you are particularly interested in. So, you know, if I said dividend yields, let's have a look at that, go close. So show me stocks where the dividend yield is, I don't know, greater than 10. Somewhere else, and so there's 509 results, have it greater than 100. So 12 results. So if I want to sort by dividends, so you can see, you know, the dividend you know, growth rate on this is 8.3. You know, franking 20%, 18% payout ratio. You know, that's kind of cool. So if I go back to my 10, you know, if, if you're interested in income stocks, I got a bit distracted. You know, there's 12 results there. Let's have a look. I'm going to sort them by this. Sort it again. So, you know, who knows? If you're looking for income type stocks, maybe you, you know, look through some of these and, you know, see what might stand out to you that you want to investigate further. All right, long enough video. So again, my apologies for the length, but hopefully that, you know, showed you something you might not have seen before. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a you know, Comsec's a good site. You know, I'd, I'd thoroughly recommend it for any Australian that's looking to invest in the market. Um, it's, uh, it's good, but, you know, do have a dig through your existing brokerage program. And my tip is always, or, you know, not, not, a, not financial advice, but my tip is if you can work out how to find your own stocks then you've got a much better chance of you know investing your own money in the direction that you want to invest in and you know you can have a better conversation with your broker and um, you know start to buy stuff that you like and not what's simply just recommended you know to the overall market by you know, whichever journalist is plugging whichever stock is a sort of more cynical approach or you know outlook but anyway that's it for now and thank you very much for listening